The following video was shot by the Strategic Survivability Research Group, 2SRG, of Las Vegas, Nevada. The device used for this live insertion demonstration is the Ping Medical Fast Combat Sternal Interosseous Device. This device is packaged and colored for military use, although mechanically it is identical to the hospital and pre-hospital version called the Fast Responder. The volunteer patient is a 60-year-old male in excellent physical condition. The provider deploying the fast combat sternal interosseous device is a nationally registered paramedic and this is his second deployment of the fast device. Training received prior to this insertion amounted to a 10-minute lecture and demonstration by a PhD medical researcher using the fast trainer device and Simstern material. This is not a training video, it is a live insertion demonstration. Therefore, for detailed instructions on how to use the Ping Medical Fast Combat Sternal Interosseous Device, please visit the Ping Medical website at www.ping.com. The skin surface was clean and dried pre-insertion using an iodine skin prep swab. Be sure to follow your medical direction and control requirements for pre-insertion sterility. For insertion, the provider uses the recommended techniques discussed in detail on the Ping Medical website. The provider locates the patient's sternal notch, aligns the notch on the target foot with the sternal notch, and pushes on axis straight into the manubrium. This user-applied force will power the device to pierce the skin and seat the tip of the infusion tube into the cortical bone of the manubrium. Follow your medical direction and control for this next step. Before hooking up the IV line, you can aspirate and flush. In this demonstration, we only aspirated the marrow to clear the infusion tube tip. This was done for comparison with a companion to SRG live insertion video to illustrate differences, if any, in flow rates. Once aspirated, the IV tubing and bag are connected to the infusion tube and the flow begins immediately. On a pain scale from 1 to 10, the patient claimed he felt only minor discomfort on a low level of 1 or 2. Flow rates can be as fast or as slow as needed. While maximum flow rates in excess of 100 cc's per minute are possible, there is typically no need for such a high flow rate except in cases of severe trauma. The vast majority of EMS infusions, including cardiac arrest, arrhythmias, and most medical conditions are less than 200 cc's per hour for a variety of reasons. However, as you can see in this example, a gravity-fed bag can flow at a very high rate. To extract the infusion tube, the provider grasps the tubing as close to the skin as possible, and while holding the target foot with the non-dominant hand, pulls back in a steady, continuous motion until the tubing and tip separate from the manubrium. For those who have done this, it is clear that a correctly placed infusion tube is not going to become dislodged during manual or mechanical CPR compressions. This is the insertion site one hour after insertion. You can see the three bone probe insertion points as well as the central infusion tube insertion point. The fast responder and fast combat sternal interosseous devices are precision engineered devices that remove the guesswork and complexity of I.O. use. Again, for additional information on these devices from Ping Medical, go to www.ping.com. This video is a product of 2SRG of Las Vegas, Nevada, research and testing for medical professionals worldwide.